What is up guys, Coach Show, Office De La Swole, and welcome back to the part two that's covering our deload video series. So if you haven't watched part one, that's gonna kind of talk about the basics of what it is, the signs, how we use it, and why we use it. I definitely recommend checking out part one, and then you can follow up with part two, which is where we're gonna actually cover the different types of deloads that you can use for your training. So sit tight, let's get right to it. So the first method of action when it comes to managing or manipulating these variables with training for a recovery response is going to be to decrease both volume and intensity. So I find this to be the best when we have more intermediate to advanced lifters who really have pushed the pedal to the metal for a good amount of time. So this may be multiple mesocycles. And we are, like I said in the beginning, we're gonna both decrease the volume, so the amount of reps, and then the intensity, meaning the total weight, both down. So a quick example of this would be, you know, the week prior to your deload, you're doing four to five sets. Let's just say we're doing eight to 10 reps and we're working around 80% of that one rep max, okay? Now, the next week is when we are taking that reset period where we're manipulating both the intensity and the volume. So maybe we're only doing one to two sets of maybe four to five reps and we're working around 50% of that one rep max. So you can see that we are decreasing those reps in general and also the intensity. And that's really gonna allow the body to decrease that systemic and local fatigue and overall recoverability. Now the second example would be a intensity-based reduction. So that means we're gonna keep the reps and the sets the same. So say we're doing five sets of five at around 80% of our one RM. The following week, we are going to drop that to five sets of five at 50% of our one RM. So still doing the same sets and reps, but we're just reducing the total weight that we are putting on the bar. And a great way to use this tactic would be if you are kind of needing a bridge period between mesocycles where you're still feeling pretty good. Uh, you maybe have a couple of the signs of systemic fatigue, but you also don't wanna pull back the throttle substantially. So you're still making some progress. Maybe there's a little bit of a standstill point uh, in your training, so you throw this in and kind of gives you one step back, two steps forward, and then we can keep progressing. The other rationale behind this is it still allows us to get technical work and a neurological adaptation. So I like doing this for strength sport athletes who still want to train specific movements uh, and we don't want them to lose that. Not saying you would lose that in a week, but they're maybe high driven, high caliber athletes that it's really hard to get them out of the gym and training. So we can kind of still meet them halfway by still allowing you to get your sets and reps in, but we're just gonna scale back the weight a little bit and maybe focus on technique. Now the third system we can put in place here for recovery is going to be a volume reduction based approach. Now with this, say the week prior, you're doing five sets, 10 reps, around 70% of your one rep max. Well, the following week when we need that reduction in volume, maybe we're doing two sets, 10 reps, still staying at the 70% of the one RM. Uh, but once again, it's just another way to manipulate these variables to add a little bit of recovery for the body while still getting some training in. And once again, it's contextual and based on the athlete and their mindset and what would be best suited for them with this approach. Now, a fourth option, I've actually made other videos about this in the past, check out the card above. This is what I call a low stress week, okay? so. What we do with this is we actually keep intensity pretty dang high, but we substantially cut the volume. Now, I have found anecdotally this has worked best for myself and strength sport athletes, especially as we're getting closer to a competition. And the reason being is we are still able to lift heavy weights. We're type A driven, hungry to be in the gym. We love just the feeling of just handling massive loads. And with that being said, we can still do that, but we will substantially drop the volume. So. What this could look like is say you have your regular sets, so you got five sets of five, you're working up to your top set, et cetera. Well, the next week when we need to do this low stress week, maybe instead of doing five sets of five, we work up to one heavy set of five, but we're largely reducing the volume because yeah, you get warmed up, then you kind of hit your sets of five, but you're making bigger jumps and overall your volume that would have been from the previous week has decreased substantially 
to now this week. But the plus of this is that we still get that neural drive. We still get that stimulus of lifting heavy weight. And it's a good gauge, especially if we have a competition, that we can get that technical acquisition in for certain lifts or movements uh, prior to that show or contest. Now, before we close this out, I do want to talk about the one instance where we may take anywhere from two to four weeks completely off or just switch it up uh, to something we normally wouldn't do. Now, this is for more of the advanced lifters who have been training religiously for years. They have specific goals. They're top chuck of whatever they're competing at. And this could be a once a year, just active recovery phase or resensitization phase where we just kind of get out of the gym for anywhere, like I said, from two to four weeks. I know that sounds crazy, uh, but if you're someone who's been doing this for years and years and years, uh, and you've been very consistent, you've been very locked in, this can be beneficial in so many ways, not only for the body, but also the mind. And we do get that little period of, where our body is now desensitized to training. So when we hop back in, we can get some tremendous gains because we're kind of flooding the gates back again, uh, getting that machine running. And it's almost like, whoa, new stimulus. You're throwing this at me. I'm going to fire on all cylinders and we are really going to get growth out of this phase. But you got to know when and when not to use this once again for probably more advanced lifters only and people that have been super consistent for years on end really truly deserve this period. Uh, but if it's done properly, you can see tremendous results. And when doing this, like I said, you just get out of the gym. Like there, there may be no training during this period, or if you do train, it's very low intensity, very low volume. It's something maybe you haven't done in the past where you're focusing on maybe some endurance or maybe you're playing around with kettlebells or maybe you're just doing some carry variations here and there, uh, but it should be very separate and different from what you've been doing for the last several years. Now let's wrap this up and kind of summarize what we had just talked about. But in summary, the number one thing is you need to find what works best for you. I gave you some examples and obviously they're gonna be different depending on where you're at with your training or what you're competing in or what your mindset's like, um, but it is very custom to the individual. On the flip side of what I said earlier, if you are an intermediate to advanced lifter and you do take these lower stress or manipulating these training variables to increase your recovery and say it is a week long, understand that it is for a purpose and it is needed. Sometimes I've worked with athletes or even myself where you structure this period and then you start kind of getting into that week and you're itching to maybe get back in the gym. And I would say if you are itching to get back into the gym, you probably didn't actually need it in the first place. Um, but say you did actually need it and you still do want to go train, realize that this is a necessary evil and be okay with that. One step back, three steps forward, grand scheme of things, this is what's needed to make that progress. Outside of that, when we are taking these periods to reset the body and get those adaptations from recovery, prioritize your sleep, prioritize your nutrition, maybe add some calories in there because, and you have to realize, and I use the analogy of a wave, right? So you're, you're in front of this wave the whole time and the wave is chasing you down. So when you take this period of the week to recover, you are actually getting that wave to catch up to you and hit you. So when that's happening, we are using a ton of energy to repair and restore our body, which means we need to get on our recovery protocol, such as sleep, increasing our nutrition and relaxation tactics to get the most out of this time. And lastly, like I said, chances are, if you don't think you need a low stress or deload period, you probably don't. So keep training hard and earn it. Uh, but that's all I have, guys. So if you were interested in this topic and you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, give me some comments down below. If you're somebody who's looking for programming, we have the a la carte options, we have the app, we have one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, so if you guys are interested, shoot me an email. We kind of set up a free Zoom call. We'll talk about it and see if it's a good fit for you. Outside of that, just your support means the absolute world to me, but that's all we have today, guys. So stay a lean, mean strength machine. I will catch up with you next time. Peace.